Sure. My name is Russ Heimerich, and the last is spelled H H E I M E R I C H. And I am the Deputy Director for Communications for the Department of Consumer Affairs. You can just call me a spokesman. Yeah. Well, in this case, um, it, uh, in under normal circumstances, in a case like this, they wouldn't. So what we're trying to do is go back and find out how this particular individual got licensed. Um, a, fe a felony conviction by itself is not a bar to a license, but obviously if it's a violent felony or something like that, the likelihood of somebody being licensed is very low. Don't know how it happened and this time we are investigating that. What we're doing now though, is we're going to try to suspend this guy's license at his next court hearing uh, so that if he gets out on bail, um, he won't be able to act as a security guard or a bouncer or, or, or you know, however he was employed. That is correct, um, because what we do is we look at the nexus of, you know, somebody's felony conviction to what they are going to be doing. In this case, it's clear that he had a violent conviction. It was only a couple of years before he became licensed. And so um, he should not have been licensed. And as I said, we're looking into actually how that happened. It's always very concerning when something like this happens. The good news is that it happens very, very infrequently. Uh, we don't have uh, uh, this kind of thing happen very much at all. And given the fact that we have, you know, several hundred thousand uh, people licensed as security guards or proprietary security guards or private investigators. Um, we, we never like to see one slip through the cracks. The vast majority don't. <clears throat> They're just required to make sure a person has a license and they are also themselves required to be licensed as an employer of a proprietary security officer. So the 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 burden is on uh, the employee to show that he has a license. So we are the ones who are doing the background checks. Um, my office, the public affairs office had not. Um, we did receive what's called a subsequent arrest notice. When any of our licensees who are required to be fingerprinted are arrested, um, and they're fingerprinted, that triggers an alert to the licensing authority and uh, it causes us to open an investigation. Absolutely. Yeah, so what we're going to do is what's called a PC-23 order. There are a couple of ways for us to suspend somebody's license when they get into trouble. The most powerful tool we have is to go to uh, to go before the court uh, when they're uh, at their next criminal court hearing, whether it's an arraignment or a bail hearing, and ask the judge as a condition um, of bail or even um, not as a condition of bail, but just to issue a restraining order that essentially suspends their license until the criminal matter is resolved. And that's uh, that too is standard operating procedure. When we have somebody who's arrested uh, for a felony and it looks like there is the possibility of continuing harm to, to consumers and others. No. That's all I wanted to get in. Like I said, we, um, uh, we, we have an investigation open into the circumstances here. We have an investigation into uh, how this occurred and uh, we'll get to the bottom of both. And in the meantime, we are uh, uh, actively going to suspend his license. The other thing is that, you know, we are, we are also going to try to revoke his license based on this arrest and, and his previous history. That's what we're that that is our intent, yes. <laughs>